Telling lies to school children is not a very effective way of reducing drug demand. They're not the ones who demand most of the drugs. Most of the drugs are demanded by a relatively small number of heavy drug, drug users who are also active criminals of other kinds to get the money to buy the drugs. So the place to reduce demand for illicit drugs is inside the criminal justice system. Demonstrated with the HOPE program in Hawaii, you can reduce drug consumption by 80 percent with nothing more than random drug tests and short but immediate and certain sanctions for continued drug use. Uh, tell me more about that. Are you talking about inside prisons? No, no sir. Uh, These are felony probationers in the community, mostly for property crimes, who have long histories of meth use mm. and who continue to use while they were on probation, even though they were being drug tested. Because yeah. the result of a positive drug test was the probation officer would say, don't do that again. And the result of another positive drug test would be the probation officer would say, don't do that again. And the result of a third positive drug test would be the probation officer saying, if you keep doing that, you're going to get in trouble. And finally, unpredictably, the sixth or ninth or twelfth time, the probation officer would lose her patience and write up a report for the judge, and the probationer would be on his way to prison for six months. Mm -hmm. Very surprised, and legitimately so, since he hadn't done anything he hadn't done before, hadn't done anything all his mates were still doing. And so the only lesson he was going to get was that the probation officer was personally mad at him. It's not the lesson you want learned. So what Judge Stephen Alm did in Hawaii was say people are on random testing, they have to call in every day to find out whether it's their day for a drug test. And he promises every single probationer personally that every positive test or every missed test is going to lead to a jail sanction. Not a serious one. A couple of days to start with, a week for a subsequent offense. Turns out under that regimen and without mandating drug treatment, 80% of methamphetamine addicts, among the hardest group to cure, 80% of them wind up clean and free on the street at one year. Do you think this is scalable? This could be uh, spread around the U.S.? And if so, why hasn't it happened? It's technically completely scalable. Um, it's very cheap, much cheaper than treatment, much cheaper than a drug court, mm -hmm. and much cheaper than simply allowing the guy to keep committing crimes and then eventually go to prison for it. So hope saves about five prison dollars for every program dollar it spends. Utterly scalable, but it requires really good public management. It requires coordination among the judge, the judge's staff, probation supervisors, probation officers, police, treatment providers, prosecutors, and defense counsel. And as soon as the experimental period was over, the judges went back to business as usual. And Adele's conclusion from this experiment was that Changing addict behavior is easy. Changing judge behavior is hard. Or as Pogo said, we have met the enemy and he is us. This is not an offender management problem. We know how to make the offenders behave. We need to learn how to make the officials behave. And that's the hard part. It's interesting what's happened recently in Russia is that there's been a huge explosion of literary talent and there's a lot of different books being written in different genres. So there are spy fiction, there's thrillers, there are whodunits, detective stories, all kinds, romances, thrillers. But uh, what's really interesting is that some of the more literary texts, a lot of them are actually kind of sci-fi, have a very dystopian kind of edge to them. They envisage a very dark future. Uh, and usually this happens obviously when people are worried about the direction their, their country is going in. Uh, one in particular, for instance, uh, just here, uh, Vladimir Sorokin's Day of the Aprichnik, uh, it envisages Russia in the year 2028. Uh, the Tsar is back in a kind of Ivan the Terrible style and, and with him the Aprichniki of the title, the secret police that were formed in the time of Ivan the Terrible have become this murderous gang of security guards that go around raping, pillaging, burning and uh, then having kind of drug induced orgies during the night. Um, it's an extraordinary satirical novel and it is in a way typical of the kinds of works uh, that are appearing now in Russia, v quite dark but also very 
literary, very postmodern, with a great mixture of styles in them. This has songs, it has poetry, it has fragments of Chinese, all kinds of interesting uh, linguistic devices. Sorokin himself, obviously, is quite a um, controversial author. Uh, at one point, the, uh, the young um, uh, political group Nashi tried to uh, sue him for pornography. Pornography. They, they had a huge demonstration where they put copies of one of his novels into a giant toilet outside the Bolshoi Theatre. So he is one of those very controversial kinds of writers. So what's particularly interesting about the novels that are coming out of Russia at the moment, uh, to my mind, is that they are actually particularly... Um, literary and cerebral in a way that a lot of novels are kind of afraid to be, I think, now in Britain. It's not altogether true, there are exceptions on both sides, but it's quite interesting, particularly if you look at the discussions around the literary prizes. There's a lot of literary prizes in Russia, so you've got the Big Book Prize, the Russian Booker, the National Bestseller Prize, uh, and there's a new one called the NOS Prize, founded by Mikhail Prokhorov uh, just a couple of years ago, and that one, the discussions were leaked in a sort of WikiLeak style, and the judges' discussions were quite unlike the judges' discussions, say, for the British Booker, that you've got uh, this emphasis on discovering a new model of the world. They actually said what they were looking for was a new moral and metaphorical map of the world. Uh, they wanted books that were consciously literary, that were trying to explore the nature of identity, both nationally and individually. So there is a really very, very interesting uh, kind of literature appearing now from Russia, and obviously the best ones, prize-winning ones that are translated, are definitely worth a look.